about Grant. Uh, he's kind of dropped in popularity a lot uh, in the 20, 21st century, but this mausoleum is the largest mausoleum uh, dedicated to any American president anywhere. And an interesting fact about it that we saw on the uh, side in front is that African Americans helped to raise money to build this monument to Ulysses S. Grant. I mean, obviously, African Americans thought very highly of Abraham Lincoln. But, uh, you know, Grant, as both a general and then as a president, was interesting. I just had to, as the old man said, that he was not Lincoln's first choice, or second choice, or third choice, or fourth choice. Right? But he started with a general called General George B. McClellan. And he was a young, brilliant officer, graduate of West Point. They called him the Young Napoleon. And he met with Lincoln at the start of the war and handed Lincoln a letter telling him that I will fight this war for you. I will lead the Union forces against the Confederacy. But I do not believe in emancipation of slaves. I do not believe that this is what this war is about. And this, that this is what you as president should be doing. So imagine if Lincoln had these top generals giving him a letter saying, that I'll fight this war, but I'm not going to fight the free black people. And Lincoln thinks about it as he puts it in his hat, <laughs> they tall hat. Uh, and that has to sit on his mind. And so finally, after going through several other generals, when he gets Grant, he finally has a general who is at least supportive of what Lincoln has decided to do after he's 63, which is to make this war, the Civil War, partly about emancipation. As Lincoln says in Gettysburg, uh, of course, he's getting a there, that this war is now about giving this birth of what Lincoln called a new birth of freedom. Uh, and so to uh, be able to recruit and use black soldiers before 1863. Uh, black soldiers in the North and South had been used um, as laborers to move supplies, equipment, to bury the dead, but not as combat soldiers. And so when Lincoln decides to do this after the Emancipation Proclamation, to have a general in Grant who's willing to uh, enforce it and try to use it, not all of the generals work. I mean, William Tecumseh Sherman uh, says, Grant may start to use black soldiers, but there'll be no niggas and Uncle Billy's on them. So not all of them were supportive of this, but uh, Grant, Grant was. Uh, and then as his president, um, to at least uh, support the passage of the 15th Amendment, which gave all these black men the right to vote. Uh, later, Grant would say, I don't know how much good it did. And, and, uh, in retrospect, uh, we could ask ourselves so close to election day, uh, was it as important as people thought at the time? gave black people the right to vote. It would make a major difference. Grant said I supported it, we did it. Uh, but then in retrospect, we didn't think it was necessary to bring this thing. But uh, with, with that additional information about Grant, what do some of you think about him? Should he, should he be better known, uh, better appreciated, undervalued uh, as American president? That's why, in contrast 
to Dad and Johnson, uh, this is his brand, um, was much more yeah. favorable. Yeah. Why wouldn't we be? You know, because I would say and Abe Lincoln, he did all what he could do to help. And then when after him, then we had someone else who tried to undo everything. And then here, um, Brad comes and he tries to redo everything. You know, because for a lot of black people, that's like looking at the sun and getting brighter. You know, so why wouldn't we want to try to make that change to make an improvement for ourselves from where we come from? Other thoughts? Comments, observations? Um, I think that they should uh, like him because he helped just like, just like they like him. He helped him just like the grant is on the fifty dollar bill, right? It's not many people look at that; they just throw that money around. Right? Yeah. Um, but he's on there more so. He was a better general than he was a president because of all the scandals, yeah. particularly in the second administration. Uh, but could Lincoln have won the Civil War without Grant? I mean, Lincoln did everything he could do politically, but Grant, as Professor yeah. Olmert said, had a different military philosophy uh, as opposed to trying to be like. Uh, uh, General Sherman, when Grant was appointed, and people question whether Lincoln should even choose Grant. Uh, he had the reputation of being a heavy drinker during mm -hmm. the Mexican American War, and they said, Grant, Grant, don't choose Grant. Grant is a drunk. And Lincoln supposedly said, We should find out what brand of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> so I can give some of that to my other generals. <laughs> Whatever you want to say about Grant, he fights. Yeah. The man fights. Even when he loses, as he did in the first day of Shiloh. He says, well, we'll win tomorrow, right? Um, after the Battle of the Wilderness, usually with big casualties like that, uh, the North would retreat back to the North, lick their wounds, and then a few months later make another attempt. Uh, Grant said, we have an American advantage. Uh, and so even if I lose 10,000 men, 15,000 men, uh, Lincoln and Kirby says, you're still winning because they can't continue to absorb those kind of casualties and remain a fighting force. And so Grant understood that. He said, just get there first with the most. Yeah, he, uh, you know, I'm sure some of those lost soldiers wondered about his tactics. But in a sense, he's one of the first modern generals. And I think in a sense, you can say he predates some of the tactics of the First World War, which was the mass attack um, to just try to overwhelm the enemy by numbers. And uh, there may be losses in your own ranks, but you absorb those because you're going to win. And that was sort of his philosophy. Yep, I suppose we can go in. All right, thank you very much. So the union.